Hello. Today I'm gonna draw a, a Titanoka spider. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's this guy right here. To start off, I'm gonna draw the ball of the head. I think that's a good size. Well, you know what? Yeah, I think that's a good size. Based on the perspective, it could sometimes um, in reality, the uh, cephalothorax in the back here may appear a bit larger, but you know its head is close, so you kind of get that effect. Now I'm going to draw the cephalothorax, which is the uh, abdomen and thorax combined, I believe. Yeah, I think that's good. I'm going to show the curvature using some uh, partial ellipses to show how the bodies wrap around. Well, it's really going to wrap around here, but it connects like right here around the curvature. Okay, now I am going to draw the uh, the legs which are kind of like attached to the underside of the spider. Um, it can be a bit difficult to understand where they all attach. <laughs> and I, I why my, uh, it's like directly under it, the head kind of in this general area. It's not on the, it, it, it's, <laughs> you know, it's very weird because uh, spiders are like fused together and it's, uh, I'll show you the pilot holes for it. And this being the spider, it's got eight legs. Oops. Well, usually they're attached a bit more inside on the bottom. Can be a bit difficult to see. Well, they're also a bit close as well. And sorry if you hear something like <laughs> something falling or rolling. Um, we have a tree and it's dropping nuts. So sometimes nuts will randomly hit the roof and like you'll hear a rolling sound. I try to play in my videos around times when I don't think I'm going to hear a significant amount of noise. <sighs> but there's always something. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to draw this back leg first. I'm going to draw a gestural line um, to kind of help me orient the legs. And the back leg is a bit obscured, so I'm just going to draw uh, what I see. Sometimes you get that with a uh, certain camera focus. could always be very well not always it could sometimes be a challenge many times have I drawn the legs um to realize before that I finish that I feel like I should have drawn one of these just draw lines in a different way so I think I'm going to try something new in this video I have the back legs drawn first so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to draw <coughs> a portion of them and I tend to draw, um, well, sometimes you can make inferences based on the legs that you can see. It could sometimes be dangerous to do that, but I've looked at some other images of this spider and all of the legs are pretty much identical. I mean, probably hair is a bit different in certain places, but I'm not so concerned with hair. So I want to draw um, the back legs first before I draw any other lines and I want to see if I when I'm doing it this way if there's uh, any significant difference to how I end up 
uh, completing it. Every insect is usually a different use case. Oh, well, I'm sorry, this would be an arachnid, not an insect. But um, I've run into many different uh, use cases when it comes to me drawing things. Like there are some insects that have uh, modified back legs, and I'm pretty sure it has uh, something to do with aerodynamics. I will have to read a book on it, but I've seen enough insects to know that like, there are some that have very dis distinct back legs compared to uh, other ones. You know, the funny thing about this is there's got to be like an initial attachment beam part of some type. Usually with uh, spiders on their underside, they have these uh, significant bean-like shapes. No, they're not beans. They're like they're usually something like that that attaches to their underbelly. Okay, so I have that drawn. Let me do this one. And although it's not the entire leg, because some of it's out of focus, I could at least get some of it down. Although it seems like it kind of does a bend over here. Okay, now for this leg. And the interesting thing here is I'm going to draw this in parts trying to go through it about like that. It's very interesting to uh, deal with some of these uh, individual sections. And these things that I'm drawing here, uh, I know they're a bit hard to see, but they're really just uh, partial ellipses. Sometimes I will draw them as a straight line, because if you ever, if you look at like a penny head on, it'll look like a straight line, if that helps kind of explain the logic of um, why it's like that, or why I do it that way in the uh, first place. <laughs> Oops, a bit too big. Oops. I've also realized that sometimes the more overlapping lines you had, it could be a bit more confusing, so I always recommend that you uh, give it a solid moment to observe the lines that you've drawn before you draw another line, or else you may be drawing in an area that you uh, may not have intended. But everyone makes mistakes, you know. Just learn from those mistakes. I think that's the important thing to do. a bit more, kind of like that. It attaches at the junction. Well, you want this one, it kind of like goes that way rather than that way before it connects to that one. There are some interesting things going on. The legs are really thin out, like thin matched sticks near the end. Okay. Um, I just realized I may have messed some of that up, <laughs> as I said, before I go on directly to make the same mistake that I was trying to avoid. Um, okay, now I want to draw this leg right here, kind of like goes down a little, well, kind of goes a bit more like that, and more like that to about there. The other interesting thing is it has these, uh, Two, two claws at the end, which are significant for climbing stuff. Probably its own web. That's what I would boldly assume it would be for. Here's a little interesting fact about spiders. Apparently, and don't quote me on this, but apparently a lot of spiders 
make a path that they know on their web. So like there are certain areas where they avoid so they don't get tangled within their own web. I believe. So they have like a, their own path. Although there are many different types of uh, spiders. I think the diving bell spider is cool. I'll have to draw one of those one day. You see, I should have made the leg a little bit longer than I did. A bit frustrating, but I'll work through it. Now, this leg is doing some interesting things. It's like going above. This leg is going above and beyond its head. About here, then it's kind of like going like that. It's doing some weird stuff. It may not be weird. It may just be a perspective issue. Now that I think about it. I'm sorry, there's a lot of overlap going on with um, that leg. Makes things a bit difficult to see. Okay, now I want to do this leg. And the cool thing about that leg is it's not as difficult to see. So it kind of does that, 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 and that. Sorry, didn't mean to cough in the mic. I hope that wasn't bad. I never do that intentionally. I had the uh, the thing, the, the cold that uh, you can't say on the internet, and it left me with some lingering effects. <laughs> that haven't gone away yet. It'll probably go away eventually. But for now, I'm stuck with it. So sorry about the cough. The last thing I want to do is be annoying with it. But that's just gonna happen. I try not to cough in the mic. And I'm always trying to be aware of the, uh, the audio. The audio will tell me if I'm uh, talking too loud. It, I, I like to be aware of that, so there's not like, you get the drift, I don't want to be like screaming in anyone's ear, you know, it can't be good for anyone listening and also can't be good for my throat. Yeah, I want to go a bit more like that. Okay, now for this leg, which is doing some weird stuff. We can kind of see some of those uh, bean things as I was uh, talking about before. They're like those immediate under connections. They're usually like those smaller beans. They're pretty cool. But yeah, this one's doing some, it's kind of like going this way, then it's going that way, and it's going down, and to about there. Oh, you know, it should be straighter at the end. I really like that line I drew, which is frustrating, because I'm going to do it again. Yeah, the ending piece was a bit more uh, straight, and I'm trying to keep in mind the distance between here and here. 
Although it seems like I can go a bit further. Yeah. About to there, I would say. Okay. This like we can really see those ellipses uh, coming into play. I always think about how the individual connections of the leg are kind of like these either bean cylinders or most of the time they kind of always seem like matched sticks to me. They get thinner as you go lower, but yeah, you have that really distinct initial bean shape kind of like comes around and does that very fat bean. It's interesting. I bet they give them, I bet it gives the spider some, some mechanical advantage. I don't know what. I'm not a bioengineer, <laughs> so I can't tell you what. Well, maybe I just have to read a book. I've been meaning to read books on uh, the insects, so I have a better understanding and secondary knowledge grasping. I think that is important to do if you want to. I feel like it's uh it is important to draw. I'm never not going to tell you that. But I think also having an understanding is uh very important as well. I, I probably have made some mistakes when I say a insect or arachnid fact but okay we got the legs i'm happy with them i could always use more work drawing them but i will say i feel like they're of a higher quality than i than i've drawn in the past oh, i should thank james robin i always try to shout out the uh photograph suppliers okay so now what I want to do, I'm not sure which ones are polypops or chelsea, it's chompers here and these little things here. I'm going to start drawing those. Um, to start off, I'm going to draw two ellipses to act as the attachment points. And it's got these things over here too, which kind of, there's a lot of overlap. So I'll draw uh, gestural lines to show that, to show those. I keep thinking of those from that, um, I don't, I don't know why, but, um, there was that one episode of Spongebob when, I, I don't know, I think, like, one, I think that when, like, I know I'm going on a complete tangent, but, um, I, I want to say someone had, like, two noses on them for some reason. I don't know why that popped in my head, probably because of these two things. I don't, I know they're not noses just popped in my head. Um, random thought. Okay, so I drew those. And uh, the interesting thing about these uh, chompers here, I'm pretty sure they, they go in a bit, but when I see that initial shape, I'm thinking of it like that. They have these, oops, I think I made that one a little bit too big. They have these initial things kind of like that. The other important thing is I can kind of see how they kind of go in. They kind of like, there, there's some part within that I could see just a very small amount. And I probably should have tried to make the gap between them just a little bit wider. Yeah, I think that's good. Because that gap is important. Now it has these other things. It has like this... Uh, it's not a lip. I know it's not a lip, but it's just under area. And I did want to make a point of drawing it to kind of show. And of course, we cannot forget about the eyes, which I, I believe, I, I can't say this for sure, but I think most spiders have eight eyes. Although the funny thing is, I feel like, I feel like the other ones, maybe they're like right there. I hate to guess, but I'm just trying to think about how I see them. And I've seen many different spiders and seems like they always ha have them in different positions and sometimes it can be a bit <coughs> difficult. I hope I didn't cough in the mic again. Um, it can be difficult to see them sometimes and it has these like 
interesting uh they're kind of like beans something like that i bet those are like another two eye container things hard to say but okay i'm gonna draw these um these other little things that are protruding off her spider here Oh, yeah. These initial ones are very beanular, very bean shaped. Sorry, there's so much overlap going on over here. It could be a bit of a challenge to uh, see it. Yeah. Mm, yeah no. That should have been out a little bit more. And then the ending parts are tubular. That's how I would say it is. Okay. Now, when I do look at this spider again, I think I may have made the. Uh, the back part, the pseudocephalothorax. Oh, I don't know. Maybe the whole thing is a cephalothorax. It's back part. This. I think that area is a bit too big. When I look at my reference picture again. I think if I made that a bit smaller, I would be a little bit more happy. Or perhaps I should have put this like a little bit up closer in. That's how I would criticize what I did. Although I should probably also mention that something that I forgot to draw, there are these like triangular like formations to kind of um, connect those, these things, whatever you call them. They look like something you used to chomp. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for uh, sticking around in this video. Uh, this is my, it's a free application I made called Thumbtastic. It, I just use it to reference images at the side. Um, thanks again to James Robin for this lovely photograph of this spider. If you have a question, please ask in the comments. If you like my videos, please like them. And if you like my channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.